Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in, welcome back to my channel. Are you tired of using control nets? Does it just complicate the workflows, makes it annoying that you have to download up all these models and then keep straight which one to use when? Well, Flux Context is gonna solve that for you. We can in-paint with it, we can do, you know, like control net replacing subjects with it. It works with Laura's, all that works great with flux context and we're gonna dive right in and see how to use it all right so the first thing we need to do is set up our models um i do things a little differently with setting up models than some of the other channels on youtube i provide this dot sh script in the patreon post down below this is just a text file i'm on windows here so i'll open it up and show you how i use it so I recommend opening it in Visual Studio. You can also open it in Notepad, but opening it in Visual Studio just makes the links clickable, whereas in Notepad, the links aren't clickable. So that's why I recommend using Visual Studio. You can always just copy paste the links from Notepad if you don't want to download Visual Studio. And this is Visual Studio code, so it's not the like huge version of Visual Studio. We need to download all or most of these models. The only ones that you can choose from are the T5 XXL models down here. So the FP16 version is the biggest. The scaled version is probably the best like happy medium. It gives almost the results of FP16 with FP8. And then there's just the straight up FP8 model as well. So I would really recommend one of these two. You can also try this one if you really wanna compare it. Okay, so the way that you use this is each one of these each one of these links, if you click on it, it's just going to start downloading. So let's look at Flux Dev. So click on this, it'll start downloading. I would rename it to this because that's what I call it in the workflow. If it's not renamed to that already, and then you put it inside your ComfUI models diffusion folder. And then you just as you keep going down, they're all in that same exact format. Okay, so I'll just download one. I'm just going to download the smallest one to show you how it works. And then you can go on your own and download all the models. So here's the clip L we just downloaded. And then if we go back to Visual Studio, we need to put clip L in the Comfy UI models text encoders folder and name it clip underscore L dot safe tensors. So it's already under, it's already spelled clip underscore L save tensors. So we go to models, text encoders, and then that's where we drag the file into. I already have the file in there, so I'm not going to drag it in there again, but that's how you do it. Just do the same thing for each of the files in here. Um, obviously skipping the ones that makes sense to, or you can grab them all and, and try different variations. Okay. So that's your models installed now. Let's download the workflow and I'm going to use artificial studio, which is my kind of like one click installer that I use. It also allows you to download models um, with one click. So you don't have to do all the model installs yourself. If you're interested in it, send me a message on discord. I'll give you access and I'll send you the documentation for how to use it. All right. So I'm going to open up comfy UI. So this is the same exact Comfy UI that you have if you've installed the newest version of Comfy. My Artificial Studio, make sure I'm always on the latest version. So if you're not in the latest version, you're running into issues, that may be your problem. Okay, so let's grab that workflow and let's drag it in here. All right, so there's only a couple things you need to do here. So if you named everything exactly the same as I did, and you downloaded all the models, they should just work. Um, you shouldn't have to change anything in the workflow. If you downloaded like the FP8 model or you downloaded um, the FP16 clips or anything like that, then you may have to make some adjustments to select the models that you downloaded. Just select the ones you downloaded and then we'll continue on here. All right, so we'll start with a simple one. We will just start with this shark and I'm going to just have the shark open its mouth like it's going to eat a fish. Okay. Okay. And while that's generating, we'll talk about resolution a little bit. So I've found that the resolution doesn't matter too much as long as you stick with like a pretty standard resolution, you know, something like 1024 by 1024 or 1280 by 720 or 768 by 768. Something like that seems to work the best, but I, 
I really haven't had too many issues with res resolution overall with this workflow. All right, there you go. Really simple. Just added a fish in. Shark's about to eat the fish. Okay, now let's do one where we change an outfit. All right. And I'm just going to say the woman is now wearing a white oversized hoodie that says artificial and neon pink pants. So same pose, different clothes. So pretty sweet. Um, you, will, you may notice some slight cropping here. And that is because you can play around with whether you want to use the resolution from the beginning image or if you want to use it from the output image here. Um, I've done both. It, it really just depends if that cropping bothers, bothers you or not. All right. Yep. And there you can see it solved our cropping issue. So really cool, really cool workflow. Now let's check out a little bit more of an advanced feature here. We can load two images in, concatenate them, and then prompt it to mesh the two together in whatever way you want. So go download the two example files, example images on my Patreon, and then upload them into here. Okay, and then all we need to do now is say, so I wanna put this pattern onto the couch. So I'm gonna say the gray couch now has the kaleidoscope pattern instead. Okay, and then this is the situation where we, we can't use the size from the, from the flux context. We need to use the original size. All right, and now you can see we're getting a good generation here. All right, so now you can see that couch has the, almost the perfect pattern from the reference image. And this is something that, you know, people probably used to be able to do with Photoshop, but it would take them forever. Now it takes, you know, a few seconds. So really, really innovative. Hydream E1, which came out a little while ago, I actually think it's better at doing like clothes swapping and just modifying pictures from a prompt, but it can't do this reference image stuff which i think is super super powerful so if you just want to like swap clothes or something like that then maybe hydream e1 is better for you but if you want to actually take a reference and put it onto your original image flux context is a much better model all right so that's it for this video that's flux context really cool new model if you have any trouble with the workflow head to the discord i'll help you out there please follow me on patreon follow my other socials Appreciate you watching this video, like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.